What up, YouTube TK here, and today I'm going to show you how to run a diagnostic on a NA6 MX5 or Miata that has no check engine light. Now, this is an awesome thing to do because it's a very quick way of finding out if one of the sensors that helps run the engine isn't working and is causing you trouble. Now, this will work for you as well if you do have a check engine light on your car. You just don't have to worry about dealing with the LED. It's much simpler. So, step one is to just start the car and get it up to operating temperature. So, we'll do that now. All right, now that we've run the car up to its normal operating temperature, we'll jump under the hood. So the next step is to put the car in diagnostic mode by connecting a wire link between the pins 10 and any of the grounds here. We'll just do that with a piece of wire. Now the car's in diagnostic mode. Now, if your car has a check engine light, you can now go inside the car, switch the ignition to on, and watch that flash. However, for those of us with cars that didn't ship with the light from the factory, we have to install an LED test light ourselves. So these are just usually made with an LED and a 2000 ohm resistor. I didn't have a big enough resistor, so I ganged up two LEDs so they wouldn't blow up. For instructions on how to make one of these, check the link below, or sometimes you can actually buy one from your local auto parts store. Now you wanna put the positive side of this test light to the B plus pin, and the negative side of the test light to F-E-N, and make sure that your test light doesn't short out on the other link here. So now all we have to do is switch the ignition to on and read the flashes. Now reading the flashes is the same no matter whether you're using a light under the hood here or the check engine light on the dash. Now to count the flashes is fairly simple though it may sound complicated at first. If it's a single digit code the ECU will flash that digit and then rest for four seconds before either repeating it or going to the next code. If it's a two digit code the ECU will flash the first digit, wait 1.6 seconds, flash the second digit and then rest for four seconds before either repeating or playing the next code. It may sound a little complex, but just follow along and you'll figure it out. Three flashes, that's the number three, we'll write that down. One, one, two, three, four, five. 15, code 15. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Code 17. So we've got a three, a 15, and a 17. We'll look those up. So if we cross-reference those codes to this table here, which is also available in the description, we can see that we have code three, which is no G signal. That's related to the crank angle sensor. And then we have codes 15 and 17, which both indicate the oxygen sensor isn't operating properly. So in the end, the ECU gave us three codes. Code three, no G signal relating to the cam angle sensor, and codes 15 and 17 relating to the oxygen sensor. What's great is this lines up perfectly with the symptoms we've been having. Poor performance, low fuel economy, and the car running really, really rich. It's also a great excuse for my poor times out on the track. Now the important thing to remember is these codes don't actually necessarily mean the sensors involved are faulty. You do have to check the connections because that will give you a code as well. Check if the connection's good. If it is, it's likely the part doesn't actually work. Then you can go ahead and replace it. Finally, once you've done the repair, it's important to unhook the battery for around about a minute or so and that'll clear the codes in the ECU so that once you've got the car all buttoned up again, you can make sure the code doesn't come back. That's how you know you've fixed it. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty stoked. I now know what's wrong with my car. I'm going to fix it. Hope you found it useful. Till next time, TK out.